It was a dark and stormy night. Literally. Sunday, April 20th, 2025, at 8.38pm. A tornado one storm had moved in from Texas, into our area of Arkansas. The rain was hammering down. The lightning was nearly constant, as you can see on the screen. We'd been watching TV in the bedroom, and, luckily, the Starlink satellite-based internet had kept its connection. It normally does well, all considered, with only extremely heavy rain knocking out the satellite signals to bring about no connection. If you don't have Starlink or have experience with Direct TV or Dish Network, then the only times we lose internet would be the equivalent of having a foot of snow on the dish. So, a usually excellent, reliable system. However, we didn't think we might lose Starlink by having the system destroyed, which is the topic of this video. In extreme weather like this, we usually disconnect various things around the house. The TV, microwave, PCs, PlayStation, those sorts of things. The Starlink, mind you, is space quality. You know, tough, reliable, can handle it, and has handled it. That is, until 8.38pm. I'd gone upstairs to check the windows were all firmly closed. My wife was in the bedroom. The storm was beginning to worsen again, and the rain had become fierce little micro dots of pain if they hit your head, with no way that I was going outside to check anything in those conditions. I left the room at the top right of the stairs, and returned to the upstairs landing, about to return downstairs. That's when the event happened. There was a strong flash through the window. I didn't quite see it in full view. It was slightly off to the left from my main vision. Out through the window, I saw an extremely bright flash. It must have been the lightning bolt itself, and I thought I saw some shape to it, about no further away than the old large propane tank that the former owner of the house had used. It was an extremely bright, single fast flash, with an instant electrical explosion of a sound. I stood there, still looking outside for a while, in some kind of shock. A house has a full metal roof, and I was standing right under it, on that upper landing area. Strangely, there was no thunder, just the sound of the rain hitting the metal roof. I walked into the bedroom to tell my wife of the experience. As I entered the room, I was greeted with her story before I could tell her of mine. Uh, Mark came in the door and I said, did you hear that? Like when that thing popped, it, it was like a clap in my ear and I did not smell anything. There was no cordite smell, there was no ozone smell, there was no smoke. It was just the weirdest thing and it, it was like a, a slap. Somebody clapped their hand really loud right next to my ear and I felt the pressure, the slap on my eardrum. I also felt like the percussion around my ear, on the skin, you could feel a boom. It was really loud, it scared me. And then I looked and my clock is burnt out. She inspected it and we saw how there was a small black area on the lower right of the front display. It had been fried, EMP'd most likely, an electromagnetic pulse had instantly destroyed it. It's only about a year old, and I will be doing a teardown video to see what must have exploded inside it. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see that. It wasn't the end of the problems though, not by a long shot. We had no internet. I pulled the Starlink router's plug from the wall and left it unplugged for a clear five minutes. The router also having the power cord for the dish on it. That usually causes a full reset, and the dish will then do its horizontal resetting thing. I plugged it back in, our Wi-Fi name was showing on the TV again, it was connected to the router, but still no internet. The next morning, I checked various electronics in the house. I checked the car too. That would not have been fun if the brand new hybrid battery pack in the car had been fried straight after fitting it. A walk around the property resulted in not seeing where the strike had hit. There's nothing. No burned grass, no charred tree limbs, or any other signs. Do you think it could have been ball lightning? I then dug out a spare Starlink dish to try. About two years ago, we had some connection issues and the resulting thoughts from emails to them was that the satellite dish's inbuilt winter heater may have drawn too much power through the supplied extension wiring. Starlink very kindly sent out a whole fresh kit and within it was a spare dish. I swapped satellite dishes and reset the router. Nothing, no change. A home Wi-Fi did come up, the PC could connect to it, but still, no internet. Nothing different to the old dish. 
Next, I wondered if the extension type cable itself could have been destroyed by the strike, even though I would have expected the router to have been unalived from the very nature of being connected to the end of it. So it too was swapped. Nothing. No change at all. The next thing was to try the old dish on the replacement wiring and run the wire into the house. No, nope, no change. Which only left the ability to write a support ticket to Starlink and luckily we do have phone internet to do that. At the time of recording, that's where things are up to. With no internet, no system. But obviously you're watching this video and obviously it was uploaded. So what happened? Here's the final part of the story. We had to make a huge trip up to Minnesota and back, 2,300 miles, to collect some family heirlooms. While travelling, I emailed Starlink, but it didn't work. There was an error on their support page. We got back after just three and a half days. There'll be a video of the trip if you'd like to watch it. And I thought to swap out the new dish with the old dish, connect the spare extension wire, and replace the router with the spare router. In other words, swap every part that had been involved in the lightning strike. That enabled the system to go online, insofar as connecting to the Starlink support website, but still no actual internet connection. I was then able to put in a support ticket. On May the 2nd, this morning, I got a message that they were looking into it. The support ticket was now active and being sorted out. A few correspondences later, they wanted to know the serial number of the dish itself. So, went outside and got that number. Here's a picture of where it is on the dish. It's on the bottom of the stalk part. So, a few minutes later, I noticed the weather app at the bottom of the screen updated. Back online. So, we're back online again. Okay, that's the story, and thanks very much for watching.